I think the the VMAs is a show that always pushes the boundaries and and appeals to a wide range of audience it's around the world. I mean, it's it's kind of award show pop culture at its finest. Um, I think that it's it's the one show where you can't really predict what's going to happen, um, and and there's so many sequences in history of of the the Britney kiss, for example, and all these moments where the VMAs have pushed the boundaries and, and made moments and, and broken headlines. So um, it's I think that just appeals to international audiences so much around the world that that it's you don't know what's going to happen on that show it's um it, it's just so exciting to be a part of in in the night and and one thing could lead to another and and you're just always kept on your toes um this year for example it was the most acts that we've ever had in the room 16 um the most creatives we've ever had on the show and uh and just delivering all of those was kind of a very cool thing to be a part of We work in both ends of the arena, which you don't necessarily do on award shows because um, it's just usually either one side or or stages that are next to each other, left and right. Um, so we had two stages uh, at the north and south end of the arena and then a stage in the middle. And we bounce performances between all of them. And when you're doing that, you run into things like weight issues. Um, you run into logistical issues about where you can store sets, about uh, power issues, things like that, just because you're pulling double the amount that you usually do on these shows. And so we had to work very closely with the riggers and everything to ensure that the show was, uh, that we could hang it. So it was a mixture of ground support. It was a mixture of flown things. Um, so that's in the early stages of the show. And then we have to make sure that we leave enough in our pockets for all of the band extras. Um, and they tend to come in very late. So uh, we have about a month to pull together all of the band additions and all of their needs of flying, rigging, set pieces, etc. Um, and the Prudential being one of the older arenas, it doesn't necessarily have the biggest weight allowances and stuff. So that was that was a major struggle that we that we dealt with this year, but but we overcame it. Every year I've been lucky enough to work with a different set designer on the VMA. So that's always kind of kept me on my toes because the different people design different ways and, and do different things. So working with different designers has always kept our work kind of fresh and, and clean and new just because every designer has a different aesthetic. And so my first year on the VMAs, it was, it was a COVID year. So we were doing lots of different remotes over the city. And, and the weekend, for example, was on the top of a building in NYC. And we had lots of helicopters and then we moved into an arena setup for the past three years. Um, the first year I managed to connect one end of the arena to the other with a bunch of lighting trusses. So it was a massive, huge dome that was that was very cool. Last year's set design was very kind of clean, sleek um, uh, angles and, and a very cool like MTV retro logo in the middle of the room and then two massive triangular stages. And then this year, Matt Steinbrenner designed um, a set that was, that was, I think, one of the prettiest the VMAs have had, um, that was based on lots of curves, um, a massive moon man reflective head in the middle of the stage, and then kind of lots of sound wave curves that curved across the top. So, yeah, I've been fortunate to, to play with a lot of different cool designs that we've managed to put some really nice lighting into. AR is always really tricky um, because you can't break the barrier of what the AR is. Um, if, for example, you have a massive rainbow, you can't put lights behind the rainbow because you'll just ruin the illusion of what's happening. Um, so we've played with that the past two years um, and, and had lots of successes with it, some things that weren't so successful. Um, this year we decided to spend the money elsewhere, so we didn't actually use AR on the show this year. Uh, we decided to put it into more physical set pieces and more more things that were, were real. 
because we've used it for the past couple of years and it is so expensive, we kind of felt like we'd, we'd, done, we'd done what we can. Uh, we actually used MA3 software this year for the first time, um, which gave us so much more scope in different cool effects that we were able to run over the entire production and the entire lighting rig. Um, so that was brand new. And just, just the scale of lights as well. The technology advances so quickly that you have to keep up with it. And we were really fortunate to have some brand new products on the VMAs this year that, that ended up looking really cool. We had these lights called Pixel Line IPs that were left and right of the screens that just really brought the visual content from the screens out into the room uh, way more and gave us so much punch. Um, and I know that lots of the acts were a big, a big fan of those. Fingers crossed I'm booked for it. <laughs> so we'll see. Hopefully I get the phone call. I, I don't think we've messed it up this year. So fingers crossed. Uh, so who knows? I mean, the VMAs keep pushing the boundaries. We keep getting bigger. We keep getting better. Uh, we have to keep innovating. Um, so there's not much I can really I can really say about it at the moment. But uh, hopefully next year, if, if we're doing the show again, then yeah, we, we, we get to push the boundaries even more and, and make it more spectacular than it was this year and the past few years. Mm -hmm.